And joining me now to talk a little bit more about this issue, Doug Williams, who's been following the changes that are being made. Doug, good to see you this morning. It's good funny, you, Chris. you know, I, I kind of, wa watching this piece, I kind of go through this every day when I pick my son up from school, and I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, Christian, how was school today? He's like, it was great. He's like, I got four A-pluses, and you're saying to yourself, did you really get four A-pluses? Yeah, and a lot of times, um, the fact that you got any details was yeah, great. Yeah, and, and it's always, yeah, it was it, good. It, it's so, exactly, it's always somewhat limited, so you're really kind of wondering how good was it. So, these series, we're calling it this, this the science of reading. Yeah. So, what exactly, behind that title, this I mean, you think reading, I mean, what's the science behind Yeah, that? so it sounds kind of unromantic, and you think reading, and especially for kids who are learning it, and it should be fun. But this new curriculum change goes into uh, the science of reading. That's what they're calling it, because phonics has been what a lot of us uh, learn to read with. I mean, yeah. I learned to read with phonics. I, I, I'm guessing you did, too. Yep. And so this curriculum shift is going back sort of to an old-school approach that worked for generations. And it's scientific. Uh, its critics say that it makes it a little unromantic and a little harder for kids to actually choose what they want to read and learn about the world the way they want to see the world. Uh, but it is uh, going through words, spelling yeah. them out piece by piece, and it seems to be working so far. So the parents that you've talked about for this piece and whatnot, what are they saying about how much information they're able to get from their kids as to how they're doing? Well, uh, so far we have heard from parents that it seems to be working. Yeah. As far as they know, what they yeah. can learn um, has been positive. But that's kind of the gist of what the piece was yesterday. How difficult is it for parents to really figure out what's going on? Yeah, and they, they, the truth is that is difficult, and they have to dig for it. They have to be in touch with the teachers. They have to hound it. them. They have to show up in person uh, in order to really learn about that because kids aren't going to necessarily come home and say, hey, I, I, I got cat today. Yeah. They're going to be able to say, uh, if you read them a book, maybe they could sound out a word, and those are the little uh, pieces of growth that parents see, but it's not very scientific at home. And as you say, it's really more about the skills that the teachers have in the right. classrooms when you go in for those uh, those sit-downs with the teacher to and find out the progress. And those can be very short, by the way, which is a problem. Exactly, because it doesn't necessarily always give out all the information you need right. when they say, well, we need you to be reading a, a G level, but mm -hmm. right now your son or daughter is at a at a C or C minus. You're like, well, how are you supposed to know what that means? How do you qualify that? Right. <laughs> and, and some parents, uh, for example, if you have a child, I spoke to three parents yesterday with uh, dyslexic children. Yeah. And the only way that they were able to get a diagnosis, and it actually it was a sense of relief once they found out that their child had dyslexia. It was like, okay, I'm not crazy. Got it. And um, when that does happen, uh, they oftentimes have to go to an independent psychologist to yeah. get a full review of their child's learning ability. And, and that costs thousands. Yeah, but it's amazing also, though, like how different kids, different ways of getting through to different kids. Yeah. Because my son, very proficient in math and reading, he was behind the rest of his class. So we ended up getting him a reading tutor. Mm -hmm. And then literally within a month, okay. Okay, eight sessions, two a week for four weeks, he was right up to where he needed to be. And it's that level of confidence that these kids get. And it's, sometimes it's being a little intimidated, too. You're in a classroom full of a lot of other kids. Some are better than you. And you're like, okay, well, you know, how yep. do I navigate this? Let me ask you about the teachers, though. With this kind of change in curriculum and kind of the philosophy sometimes changing depending on what school district you're in, how are the teachers that you're talking to, how are they adjusting to these changes? Well, it depends sort of... Uh who you ask, and uh, because the teachers' union, when this was first announced, yeah. was in favor of this. Sure. And when uh, Chancellor Banks announced it at this big event, he got uh, basically a standing ovation. Teachers want to be able to be proud of their kids' proficiency in reading. That's right. the goal. However, um, it is a challenge to just say, okay, we are blanketing the New York City public school system with one uh, main curriculum. Beautiful. There are several uh, factions of the new phonics and NYC Reads program. But so teachers now have to say, okay, um, I've been doing it this way because that's what you were telling me to do. Now I have to completely switch. That is one perspective that we've heard. The other is I've been secretly teaching phonics for years because I know it works and I'm happy to be able to do it out in the open now. So um, it, it, it does depend. I mean, certain teachers and certain schools, by the way, are more equipped to be able to handle this shift, yeah. but um, it, it depends on who you ask. It's all about whatever works, I guess. Exactly. All yeah. down to right, Doug, thank you very much. We look forward to more of your reporting on this on the science of reading. And you can check out these reports at CBS News New York, of course. Okay.